Hey everyone, in this video we are going to continue solving quadratic equations, but this time specifically we're going to solve by factoring. So in the last video we solved by graphing our parabolas and seeing when did they hit the x-axis. So this time here's our steps for factoring to solve. So step number one, make sure that the equation equals zero first. Okay, that has to happen in order, in order to do the remaining parts. Step two, factor the quadratic expression. So you're going to have one side of your equal sign that has all of your terms on it. You're going to factor that. And then step three, set each factor equal to zero and then solve. So we'll work through three examples on this one. So number one, it does not equal zero right now. So the very first thing we have to do is get rid of this two. So I'm going to subtract two from both sides. And then that way we're at step one and it's complete. So we have 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 equals 0. And now all of our attention is going to be focused on the left side of this equal sign now because we're going to try to factor it. And so when you factor, that means that you're multiplying things, in this case factors, um, and when you put them back together you get back to where you started from. And so we have to do some side work to figure out what these factors are. So sometimes you can tell by looking, but this time I'm going to just walk you through figuring out how to factor this. So this is the method that I use. I say, okay, what two numbers multiply to make the last number times the first number? So 3 times negative 2. So what two numbers multiply to give me negative 6? And then let me make this more clear. This is multiplication. And then what two numbers, they have to be the same two, when I add them, I get this middle number. I get 5, in this case positive 5. Okay, and then you kind of just do some um, trial and error on how to find these values. I usually start with the multiplication. I ask myself, how many ways can I get negative 6? Negative 6 times 1. It can be a negative 3 times 2. Okay, and that's basically it. Unless I change my minus signs, I can say 6 times negative 1 or 3 times negative 2. Now what I'm looking for is out of all these combinations, how do I get 5 if I were to add? And here is the only way that I would end up getting 5 if I add the terms or the, um, the two numbers. So if I say 6 plus negative 1, that's how I'm going to get 5. And so I have to do a step also before I can write in my factors what I'm going to have. I have to separate my original quadratic equation into four terms using the numbers that I already found. Okay, so we're going to move to right here. We're going to keep 3x squared and we're going to keep minus 2 equals 0. And the middle, which used to just say plus 5x, we're going to separate it using the two numbers we just figured out. So we're going to say this is plus 6x minus 1x which is the exact same thing if you put them back together as 5x. And then you can factor by grouping. So you would say this group, and you always want to put a plus sign in between, plus this group. And then you factor by taking out the GCF, greatest common factor. And so the first group, you can take out a 3 as well as an x. And if you divide your terms by what you factored out, you have x plus 2. The second group, it really doesn't look like anything's in common here, but if that's the case, take out a 1, but if the first term is negative like it is here, take out a negative 1. And so if I divide negative 1x by negative 1, I get x, and if I divide negative 2 by negative 1, I get positive 2, and I still have an equal 0. And so this means I'm on track whenever my factors match right here, because then I do one more part of factoring and I take out what's in common. So I say x plus 2 and then what remained, let's just highlight it, that goes into the other factor. And so we have 3x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so that's what we were trying to get to. This is not the answer, but this is the end of step 2. So now we're going to set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve. All right, so let's Go back up here and just uh, let's get rid of some of this extra stuff that we were working with. Just our side work. And then we'll finish our step three and solve. 
So we take each of these factors and set them equal to zero. Now, real quickly, let me tell you why we do that. Just take a look. If I asked you, okay, three times X is zero. Could you tell me what X is? Hopefully you would say yes, and you would know that it's zero, okay? What if I said Y times five is zero? Could you tell me what Y is? Again, it's zero. So down here, anytime you multiply two things, two factors, and the product is zero, we know that one of them was zero. So that's why we do step three up here, set each factor equal to zero. So we're gonna say X plus two equals zero, or three X minus one equals zero. And then we just solve each one. So solve the first one for X, subtract two from both sides, and you're gonna get that X is negative two, okay? And then the second one, that one's just gonna be two steps, add one to both sides. So we get three X equals one, and then divide by three, and we get that X is one third. And that's our answers. So you can plug them in to check. If you're not sure if you did it right, plug them back into the original. And when you do that, you should get two. So let's try another one. Okay, so taking a look at this next one, it doesn't equal zero, so we're gonna have to move over that negative 16, but we are also going to have to distribute this 5m. So one of our first steps then would be to all move that negative 16, but then we have also 25m squared plus 40m. And then if I add 16 to both sides, I'm gonna have a plus 16 on the left and zero on the right. So that would be step one. Now, if I were to factor this, you can go through the factoring process that we just walked through in the last example. And if you take your time and factor it, you will end up with 5m plus four times 5m plus four. This one's kind of nice, it's the repeated factor. And so just to save us some work, because it's the same factor twice, when we move on to our third step and set both factors equal to zero, we really don't have to do it twice. It would just be redundant work. So we set one factor equal to zero and then we solve. So if we subtract four from both sides, we have five M equals negative four and then just divide by five and that would be our answer. So divide by five, and we get that M equals negative four fifths. And you can write it twice if you want, but you really don't have to because it's repeated. And again, you can always check by taking this value and plugging it back into your original. So on this last one, we actually saw this on the previous video and we're gonna see it on the uh, coming videos as well. We're gonna solve this every way that we talk about and this time being factoring. So this time, method of factoring to solve, it's not gonna be the best method in this case, just because it requires a little extra work. We have this partially factored term on the left side of our equal sign, but we still have this extra minus one. So even though it's partially factored, that doesn't actually help us at all. We have to foil that out so that we can bring all the terms together. So we have to have X minus three times itself and then minus one. So if we foil that out, we get X squared minus a total of six X plus nine, and then the minus one. So if we put that together, we have x squared minus six x, oh, that's supposed to be a plus nine, um, plus eight, okay? And so then we factor, and again, you can use the technique we went through in the first example. And in this case, this would factor as x minus four and x minus two. And so our last step, when two factors multiply to make zero, you set each one equal to zero. So X minus four equals zero, or X minus two equals zero. And then if you add four to the first equation, we get that X is four. And if you add two to the second equation, you get that X is two. And once again, you can always check by plugging right back into the original. Okay, so that's how you solve quadratic equations by factoring. And in the next video, we'll go over the square root property for solving.